チューシュー、ピカチュー、ピカピカ。アルバムスミー、エンドデイ、レッツテクサン、ピカチュウデリス、トゥケダー、レッツゴー、ピカチュウ。Alright, Pokemon HQ, let's take our most popular character, recreate him in loving detail, cast the internet's favorite voice of sarcasm, adhere to established canon, and drop in a lot of Easter eggs to fans of this series. Movie, I choose you! Meanwhile, over at Sonic HQ! Sonic yeah, HQ. guys, let's do what they did, but change everything about the character, remove any ties to established lore, and set the whole thing to classic gangster rap. Come on, money. Uh, hello, Internet! Oh. Welcome to Film Theory! Hello, Internet! Welcome to Film Theory! Hello! Hi, hi, hi. They actually changed the YouTube um, dislike already. The show that's kinda cringy when it tries to be funny, but at the end of the day is still endearing. Just like Detective Pikachu! Hey, so based on the internet's collective reaction, it seems like we finally got ourselves the first great video game movie of all time. Don't overcook it. It's fun. It's good. It's enjoyable. It's about as good as a live action Pokemon film could be. I'd probably say it's the first watchable video game movie. Okay, mm. dialing back the praise here. The first watchable video game movie of all time. You must understand that um, I would like to be in the world of the Pokemons in Detective Pikachu. But the plot, the lore, the storytelling is good, but it can be improved. Now, in all honesty, I saw it last night and I have to agree, it was just a lot of fun. Nothing groundbreaking, but it was just a really enjoyable movie to watch. And as an experience, it confirmed a lot of things for me. Ryan Reynolds, still funny. Pikachu, still adorable. Mr. Uh -huh. Mime, still probably creeping on kids at night. But more so than any of that, Detective Pikachu seems to have provided the final pieces of evidence needed to confirm one of the longest running and coolest Pokemon theories that's been kicking around since the first generation of games way back in the 90s. In the what is it about from the 90s? Literally decades of theories. Huh. process of solving the mystery of what happened to Tim Goodman's father, Detective Pikachu may have also just solved a much more important mystery. A case that's been open for over 20 years. A Decades of mystery. A case whose solution has huge implications about the true nature of Pokemon. So pull out your magnifying glasses and put on that deerstalker cap, because we've got ourselves a case to solve. A case begins with the video games. Who's that Pokemon? Way back in 1998, the year when everyone thought that they were king of the world and the height of mobile gaming was an 8-bit egg in your pocket named Tamagotchi. Little did we know then that we were in the middle of a revolution. The Pokemon Revolution. Generation 1, 150 cute little pocket monsters that would give rise to the highest earning media franchise of all time. Eat your heart out, Hello Kitty. Two years earlier, in 1996, the world had been met with Pokemon's red, green, and blue. But then came Pokemon Yellow in 1998, which contained one major change. Pikachu was now your starter Pokemon and just followed you around the overworld. That was pretty much it. Other minor changes were to make it feel closer to the hugely popular anime series at the time, like gym leader Giovanni using a Persian, or characters like Jesse and James replacing generic Team Rocket grunt appearances. But other than that, it was just the original games all over again. Or was it? You see, oh. there was one other very subtle change made in Pokemon Yellow. In the course of your journey across the Kanto region, you visit a place called the Pokemon Mansion on Cinnabar Island, a mm -hmm. massive building filled with rubble. Scattered throughout it are journal entries referencing the discovery of Mew in the journal of Guiana and the subsequent creation of the ultra powerful, ultra violent Mewtwo. The wreckage yes. around the mansion is the game's way of telling us that he was created here and later escaped. Something that later games, in particular the recent Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee series, makes a lot more explicit. You eventually yeah. find Mewtwo in the Cerulean Cave where he can finally be caught. But here's the important change in Pokemon Yellow, a new wild Pokemon can be found roaming the halls of the mansion. Ditto, the transform Pokemon. Pokemon, a little blob of purple goo unique for its ability to shapeshift using DNA. As his Pokedex entry says, capable of copying an enemy's genetic code to instantly transform itself into a duplicate of the enemy. Yes, and think about it, from what I remember, Ditto only smooth is using TRANSFORM! 
only move. Seems like it's just a minor shift in spawn locations, right? Maybe. It seemed Maybe. to many to be more than just a coincidence that a genetically based Pokemon would appear in an area where Mewtwo was being created using genetic experimentation. Perhaps there was a way that Ditto was connected to both Mew and Mewtwo. Maybe. Just maybe Dittos were the failed clones of Mew. The experiments that didn't make the cut until science was finally able to create the perfect Mew clone in Mewtwo. Seems so it's something like um, Mew versions 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, then it's become Mew 2. Mew 2. It's like it's a bit of a stretch, right? Furists like me grasping at straws. All they did was change one spawn location. But the closer you looked into this thing, the more details started to line up. The connection between the two only got stronger when players noticed that, again in yellow, the only other spawn location for Ditto was the Cerulean Cave, where Mewtwo winds up hiding out after his escape from the mansion. So wherever Mewtwo was, Ditto's seemed to follow. It was so, is there a coincidence that the game developers want to do share? Hmm, very sus. <laughs> very sus. It's enough to get theorists like me to start looking closer. And boy howdy did we ever find a treasure trove of evidence. The similarities between Mew and Ditto are undeniable in the yeah, game. They have the exact same weight of 8.8 .8 pounds. They're the only two Pokemon Transform. that are able to learn the Transform move purely yes. by leveling up. Even their coloration seems to match. I mean, sure, Ditto is usually purple and Mew is usually pink, but sometimes, in some iterations of the game, Mew is purple. And sometimes, in some iterations of the games, Ditto is pink. And in Detective Pikachu, the Ditto was definitely much more in the pink spectrum. But there is no denying that all the time, both Ditto and Mew have shiny forms that are both the same shade of light blue. And this is all just the superficial stuff. If you dig further into the game's data, even the numbers tell the story of how they're connected. Each Pokemon has base stats that govern their basic attributes like mm -hmm. HP, attack, defense, speed, etc. Mew is a regular jack of all trades when it comes to his base stats. He has equal base stats across the board. If you look at Ditto's base stats, you'll find the exact same thing. Identical base stat distribution across the board. Now, all of Ditto's are 52% lower than Mew's, but it's exactly 52% for all six of the main stats. The distribution of those statistics is identical. It's almost as if Ditto were a weaker copy of the original Mew. And that there's the point. Ditto isn't Mew, it's an imperfect copy. It's the result of failed cloning experiments. Cloning experiments that eventually give rise to Mewtwo and leave the little pile of gooey DNA Ditto over there in the corner wandering around looking for stuff to do. Kind of a weird Pokemon. All of it adds up to a very compelling amount of circumstantial evidence. But for the two decades since Yellow's release, that's all it's been. True, there's a circumstantial um, evidence, but having said that, I recognize that Matt Pets understand that it's the correlation doesn't mean causation. So he's gonna give me a lot, share us with a lot more points to think the factors about it. Circumstantial. A bunch of similarities never outright confirmed by any singular piece of Pokemon media. And then came Detective Pikachu. Let's lay out what we learned from the movie. And yes, we're gonna have to have some minor spoilers here. Not the big twist of what happened to Tim's father or anything like that, but for- Alright, so I'm sorry. Spoilers ahead. Sorry. Alright, let's get to it. For the smaller mysteries that are uncovered along the way, I'll give you three seconds so you can use that time to click away three, and or two, click the one. subscribe button to get notified subscribe. of every time we have a cool theory like this one. Help this channel! Subscribe, ring the bell, and thank you so much for being, for liking, sharing, commenting, and follow my channel! Thank you! To get to 10 million subscribers, please. It would be great to get that glorified paperweight. Yes, you got 10 million subscribers. Yes, you got it. Awesome. All right, we all good. Congrats. Everyone ashore who's gone ashore, fantastic. Within the movie, it's mentioned that Mewtwo is a genetically altered clone of the ancient Pokemon Mew, confirming everything that we just talked about. But the movie goes one step further. They explicitly say that Mewtwo disappeared from the Kanto region 20 years ago. Now, the Kanto region is where the first games took place and where the anime began. Interesting coincidence, but nothing earth-shattering. It's that 20 yeah. years detail that really matters. You see, Detective Pikachu is coming out just over 20 years after the release of the Generation 1 games, and exactly 20 years after the release of Pokemon Mewtwo Strikes Back, the first ever Pokemon movie which was all about, you guessed it, Mewtwo's escape. 
It's all connected, and that's not even speculation. It is something outright confirmed by the screenwriters in an interview they did with Polygon. Quote, the implication, which the screenwriters confirmed to Polygon, is that this is the same Mewtwo from the canon universe. End quote. I mean, I gotta quibble with them saying the canon universe because it's like, which canon universe are you talking about? But hey, I will take it. So we have an established and confirmed canonical connection between Detective Pikachu and the wider Pokemon franchise. Wow, that's incredible. That's the established and confirmed. Like it. Cool. But the writers went on in another interview, this time with Screen Rant, to confirm that they were aware of the Ditto Mew theories when working on the project. Quote again, So we went into the history of Ditto. We looked at all of those things, and we kind of wanted to leave it up to the audience of people that are more familiar with the story. We didn't necessarily feel that we wanted to go too much into that, but all of those things are a factor, and I think the deep origin of Ditto is a provocative question that we wanted to hint at. Because of the interaction with Mewtwo's genetic material, it did seem like there was a sensible connection between Mewtwo and the Ditto. So we have writers who've been approved to work with in the official canon, who were also aware of the possible connection between Ditto and Mew. So now the question is, how does that actually translate to what we see on screen? Well, in the movie, we see Ditto playing a pivotal role. By the end of the film, it's revealed that Howard Clifford, the founder of Rhyme City, is our true villain. A man who's out to hijack Mewtwo's mind so he can gain the psychic Pokemon's powers for himself. In order to do this, he uses his partner Pokemon Ditto. But this isn't any ordinary Ditto. You see, Howard's Ditto has the ability to transform at will, and in the film's climax, we see him do exactly that. He transforms into a Machamp to beat up Tim, then transforming into a Cubone to give him a few knuckle taps to knock him off a building, and later transforming into a raging Charizard. Heck, his Ditto can even transform into humans, which is a whole other discussion for another day. Okay, humans, but the eyes is covered with eyewear sunglasses. All of these behaviors, though, directly conflict with what we know about a normal Ditto's abilities. We're told repeatedly throughout the animes and video games that Ditto can only copy things it sees. In gameplay terms, this means that Ditto can't just transform into any random Pokemon, it always has to copy whatever enemy it's facing. But this isn't just a gameplay mechanic. It is something that's a part of this wider franchise's canon as established via various Pokedex entries. Ruby and Sapphire, Emerald, Diamond and Pearl, Black and White, White. Ditto rearranges its cell structure to transform itself into other shapes. However, if it tries to transform itself into something by relying on its memory, this Pokemon manages to get details wrong. A Ditto rearranges its cell structure to transform itself. However, if it tries to change based on its memory, it will get details wrong. It has the ability to reconstitute its entire cellular structure to transform into whatever it sees. This is further supported by what we see in the anime. The first Ditto we meet in the anime are the ones belonging to the copycat Duplica. And in her mm -hmm. episodes, we learn that Ditto are only capable of transforming into Pokemon that are physically present, and that this is a limitation of the species as a whole. So think about it, if you want to have an Arceus, a Ditto version of an Arceus, firstly you must have seen an Arceus. The Ditto that you possess must have seen the Arceus in the first place. In the fictional world, of course, in the fictional world. Likewise, all the other episodes that have Ditto only show Ditto transforming into Pokemon that are present for it to copy. Across all of our research, there were zero canonical cases of Ditto randomly shape-shifting at will without having a Pokemon nearby to copy. So for Howard's Ditto and Detective Pikachu to cycle between forms so rapidly and so precisely, forms that it's not seeing and is still able to replicate flawlessly, it must be some kind of Super Ditto. Something that we haven't seen in this series before. Something that was artificially birthed out of a laboratory off of Mewtwo's genetics. So it might be something like, uh, instead of Mewtwo, it'd be like Mew 1.9, 1.99. <laughs> 
Remember that all this time, the working theory that we've been trying to prove is the connection between Mewtwo and Ditto. That, like Mewtwo, Ditto was also born out of the same genetic testing. Now, in Detective Pikachu 20 years later, we see Ditto and Mewtwo connected yet again. Howard Clifford is doing genetic experiments on Mewtwo in the outskirts of Rhyme City, and in the process produces a Ditto with powers that surpass the other members of its species. Tim says, What kind of Ditto was that? That was one of my father's genetic experiments. If you were looking for the final piece of confirmation for the link between Mew, Mewtwo, and Ditto, this is it. And probably as explicit as we're ever gonna get. Ditto is made out of the genetic stuff that Mew and Mewtwo are also made out of. It is more possible now than ever that Ditto is just a bunch of failed protoplasm coming out of Mew cloning experiments. Back in 1998, it was all about creating the first forms of Mewtwo and the random regular Dittos that spawned out of that process. Now, 20 years later, in 2019 with Detective Pikachu, it's elevating and exploiting Mewtwo's powers for the next level of Howard Clifford's evolution, and in the process, he's creating a stronger, more advanced form of Ditto. In the end, it took a film theory to confirm one of the most famous game theories of all time. Oh my god, it's just got super meta! Film theory and food theory together! How about a film theory, food theory, Sorry, all the time, I mess up. Film tiers and game tiers together. How about having even more tiers involved? Awesome, right? But hey, that's. Ox says to catch all Pokemon. One Ditto is basically the same thing. Just a theory. A <laughs> multimedia cross platform theory. And if you want to see more on Detective Pikachu, check out my film theory on why Detective Pikachu himself might actually be Ash's Pikachu. The movie doesn't outright deconfirm it, and heck, he really likes riding on Tim's shoulders the whole time. Or hop on over to my other channel, Game Theory, for some more Pokemon excitement. I have over 20 episodes theorizing everything from how geography affects evolution in the Pokemon series to dead Pokemon and what happened to them. Heck, this last weekend I actually did one exposing the true story behind one of the mysterious ghost girls that haunts the Pokemon games. In fact, I'm gonna link to the whole Pokemon playlist right here so you can just binge watch Pokemon theories to your heart's content. So now yeah. if you'll excuse me, I gotta go catch them all. Catch all the other big release movies that hit in like a one month span. There's a lot to watch that I have to get through, so I need to run back to the theater now that this episode's done. Hopefully it produces some good theories! Gonna catch them all, Pokemon! <laughs> uh, thank you so much for watching this video together with me. I hope that you find this video very cute, adorable, and quite interesting to watch. It's quite special, right? If you do like this video, please show me too. <gasps> Like, share, and subscribe to my channel, and comment down below if you have any share of us. Don't forget to follow my channel, and sincerely appreciate all of your support and encouragement for my work. Thank you all so much, and I hope to see you all in my next video. Bye! But, hey, that's just a theory. A film theory. And cut. Thank you. And I hope to see you all in my next video. Bye! <laughs> subscribe. Thank you so much. Subscribe!